You know, I love podcasting. I have since 2006, back when you had to use like a Dixie cup with string to make the thing work. And that's why I'm so excited that we recently moved Mysterious Goings On to Anchor FM to record our podcast. I got to tell you, I don't regret it a bit. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First of all, it's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. I'm not going to lie to you, when I first heard about Anchor, I was a little dubious because I've been doing it the hard way for so long. But I got to tell you, it's very easy. Use a Stripe account get sponsors, you're not paying monthly hosting fees, the sound quality is great, the distribution is phenomenal. Friends, download the free Anchor app today if you want to start your own podcast or go to anchor.fm to get started. Remember, you heard it here first on Mysterious Goings On. Welcome to Mysterious Goings On. I'm Alex Greenwood, your host, and this is Chapter 14. I guess you could call it Episode 14, but you know, since this podcast is about writing and writers, I thought we'd call it Chapter. Kind of clever that way, huh? I was pausing for your laughter, folks. That's okay. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the past few episodes. It's been a really nice ride so far. Kind of started this podcast as a bit of a lark, just something to... Uh, talk a little bit about genre writing from an indie perspective in particular, an indie author perspective. And I think it's also, frankly, been a way to deal with writer's block in the sense that (laughs) I don't write when I'm doing the podcast because lately I've had some trouble um, getting some stuff off the ground. But that's for another day. Today we're excited to have back, and I think we should just name him kind of like the... uh, the permanent, you know, guest or guest host. Remember on the Americans will remember the Johnny Carson show. He always had like these kind of permanent guest hosts like the late great Gary Shandling or or Joan Rivers or or David Brenner. They would kind of come in when, you know, he wasn't there. It's not as if I'm not here, but I think it's like um, when I when I my go to best guest is Jason McIntyre, the author of tons of great books like Thalo Blue, On the Gathering Storm, The Dovetail Cove mystery series which we've talked about previously he's going to be back so jason are you there here i am thanks for having me yet again hey welcome back man i appreciate it it's it's like a a writer in residence that's it there we go i like that yeah very good yeah and a very prolific great writer uh i mean it's just amazing when you look at your page and i don't use the word amazing too often but i'm i'm somewhat amazed i am in awe when i look at the the volume of work you you put out i'm just looking at your amazon page for example and it's just title after title after title and they're good titles oh thanks man yeah and i appreciate that well sure and i am I'm excited to talk to you today. There's a novella you did. It's been a few years, but it's one that was number one with Amazon and Suspense, I believe. That's right. Yeah, actually, you jogged my memory on that. A couple of years back, it was I think it was the third title I put out. And what had happened is I put out On the Gathering Storm, and it had some success, had some downloads. And so I was trying to chase that chase that fire a mm-hmm. little bit. So mm-hmm. I wanted to put out some things. So I put out The Night Walk Men, which was... Kind of unusual at that time because I think I think indie writers were putting out full length books and uh, this was a shorter thing. I think it's about eighteen thousand words. So in book form, it would be maybe fifty or sixty pages. So it was a bit shorter, but not really a short story. So it was a bit odd that way. And it turned out that um, at that time, Amazon wasn't really promoting or pushing or even making available free books. Right. It was pretty rare that you got a free book. Um, they didn't actually distinguish between free and paid books. They had a bestseller list for just any of their any of their titles. Mm-hmm. And the Nightwalk Men actually made it to number one for all of Amazon. Um, wow. I, I think it was yeah, it was it was amazing at that time. I think it was over thirty four thousand downloads in about two and a half weeks. Um, 
So pretty fantastic. So I tried to chase that fire, and I put out two short stories and a full-length novel based on the Night Walkman universe. Not because not because it was uh, like a, a grab for for well I mean it was I, was I, mean, I wanted, on, I wanted, don't I wanted get a audience. getter buddy yeah. I wanted I wanted the audience but um, to be fair to me I, I had the stories in mind for a long time and, and was just looking for an excuse to write them mm-hmm. so um, you know thirty four thousand downloads means hey I could probably justify spending a few months writing a full length novel in this world so that's what I did and that's called the Devil's Right Hand and the Night Walkman novella. It basically acts as a prologue to that bigger book. I'm going to read something here. Quote, I'm grateful that the emergence of ebooks has given new life to short fiction, and I'm happy that I discovered this author. Jason McIntyre has a wonderful way of painting worlds with words. Geez, it's like the guy's channeling Rod Serling while Ray Bradbury whispers in his ear. Unquote. That's from a review. Wow. I had forgotten that review. Yeah, yeah, and I, I know as a practice, you don't generally read your reviews much anymore. But that one—that's from October fourth, twenty twelve, when this book was out and burning up the charts. Um, that is cool. Thanks for reading that. Now I feel okay about you know. About <laughs> no things. greater, hey, no greater uh, <laughs> approbation than to be mentioned in the same breath as Bradbury and Serling, as far as oh, I'm wow. concerned. You know. Yeah, I think we should just shut off the podcast now and. I- I think we I should. should. Just, I should just rest on my laurels here. I, I think we should. But, you know, also, and I'm not going to, you know, embarrass you, but, you know, uh, Bookish Reviews said this was definitely felt like reading Neil Gaiman with occasional creepiness of Stephen King. Jason is my all-time favorite writer. His stories keep me up all night. Yeah, I remember that one. That was, I was quite proud of that as well. That's well, that's EVCO, who is who has since then actually become kind of a friend on social media. She's fantastic. Yeah, I felt really good about that as well. But, uh you're going to make my head huge, and I won't fit in the podcast anymore. Well, this is true. Yeah, I'm just waiting for the day when you'll be just too busy to do uh, the mysterious goings-on. I'll never I'll never be too busy uh, for you. Oh, aren't you kind? Thank you. Mm. So, The Night Walk Men, three-year-old Gabriella plays with her twin brother on a train platform. Blind saxman Braille the Rail meets with an old, old friend. The earth rumbles beneath them all the promise of an approaching locomotive. Now, two mysterious strangers, both of them acting in the interest of an otherworldly sense of duty, will decide their fate over a cup of tea. The the premise of the Night Walkman is, it's not brand new. It's the idea of death personified, which has been done in fiction and on the screen a lot. However, the twist with the Night Walkman is the idea of who the Night Walkman are. They are not uh, supreme deities. They they walk among us. They're human-like. They're basically the blue-collared worker bees of life and death. And so our main character is Obsidian. He, according to the text, he has been imbued with the lives of ten men. So he's hundreds of years old. He's basically the lowest guy at the company. If, if, <laughs> if, uh, yeah, if life and death was a corporation, he's like the, the lowest guy. And he doesn't always know what the goals of the greater universe are. He's basically told... You have this work to do, and they call it his duty. You have this duty to do. Uh, you have to go out and you have to cull uh, members of your flock. You have to take their lives today. This is who you have to take today, and this is who you have to take tomorrow. And you can't question why you're doing it. You don't know why, and we're not going to tell you why. And so after perhaps hundreds of years, Obsidian is frustrated. He's tired. He's been doing this work. He's been following his duty uh, without questioning it for hundreds of years, and he, he's just he's done with it, and so he he pushes buttons. He he's pushing back to see how he can change things or how he can even find out what his per- his greater purpose is, and so he decides I'm going to actually take a life that I haven't been asked to take, and this sets in motion the whole thing with Braille the Rail and Gabriella, and um, basically this paranormal world is turned upside down and it sets the stage for the greater novel called the devil's right hand. Now the, the narrator of the story is uh, a fellow by the name of Sparrow and he's also a night man and he's obsidian's son and he's telling the story from his perspective and he's also hundreds of years old. So as you, as you might imagine uh, giving life, taking life over hundreds of years uh, these characters have seen tons of different civilizations and different parts of the world. Their their spoken accent is is a bit muddled and different and weird. And so when I did the reading for the audiobook of The Night Walk Man, I was searching for something that made it sound familiar to us. 
because they speak English, but different enough. So I think uh, by the time you get to the the audiobook reading, I think uh, I think it should be a really interesting and mysterious sounding world that uh, that exists in the Night Walkman. There's also two other uh, short stories. One's called Crow, and one's called Corinthian, and they kind of enlighten more of this world and more of these characters. Um, and I, I hope people will will give it a listen here and uh, maybe check it out if they if if it sounds like something they would enjoy. Well, definitely, and, and uh, as a special treat, uh, we're going to cap this conversation with the first chapter of that reading of The Night Walk Men. I, I, I just had a couple of quick questions before. Sure, yeah. 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 Now, you know, their appearance uh, of, the, of the men, is there, a, is there a special appearance, the way they, they physically appear? That... Yes, well, they s- kind of think of them as subordinate deities. They have sort of mythical, magical powers that, that aren't as powerful as say if if God was personified, but mm-hmm. they they can disappear, they can become invisible, they can move through a space, and all you see is a, is leaves kind of trickling on the ground. Mm. You can see their shadow, or you can see nothing at all. It's, it's really their choice on how they want to appear to you. Obsidian has this trick um, or this this habit of his. He has memorized a discourse. He calls it his discourse, and so when he takes a life. He feels that he owes that person something because it's it is his duty, but, but it's also something that's really difficult for him. So he he reads this snatch of poetry that he's written into the ear of his, for lack of a better word, of his victim. So if you're about to die and you hear a little snatch of poetry in your ear, it's probably Obsidian come to do his work. Oh, oh my. What if it's just a dirty limerick? Is that... Uh... Well, I think that would be his son, Sparrow. Sparrow's a bit of a <laughs> smartass and a bit of a jackass, and he, uh, while he, while he tends to speak in kind of old English and very formal English with a bit of an accent, he, I like to joke, if Sparrow was a real character and alive today, he would probably be on Twitter. You know, he would probably be making smartass comments on Twitter, like Black or Death, nineteen ninety nine, tweets. Ooh, terrible day today. Had to take a busload of kids. Uh, going home to draw the blinds and brew some tea hashtag don't bother me kind of you know oh, he would yeah. just be he would just be he would take he takes death seriously but he lightens it with with humor and sarcasm he's to be honest he's he reminds me a little of simon from uh, the john pilot books he, oh. oh yeah he he pipes up at inopportune moments to kind of add his little twist on on the happenings of the story right 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 well that's that's cool you know well one reason i ask is because um uh, uh, the more I think about this story, the more I, I, I the 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 slender man phenomena. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you predate that. I think so. I at do. least at least uh, the the grand or or mass knowledge of slender man. I think it's been around a while, but I don't think that most people knew about it hmm. until about three or four years ago. I think. Right. I think you're you were ahead of the curve there, and like you said to start out, this type of theme has been around, but it's of course this has got the you know the J Mac, as I call it, you know, stamp on it. It's got the this. I was talking offline to Jason, bef- listeners, before we started about he let me, uh, and I won't, uh, Jason, don't freak out. I'm not going to say much, but he let me. Uh, I was honored to 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 kind of, in a way, beta read a new work he's doing, and uh, uh, and I told him I said, well, it made me very uncomfortable, and and he laughed and thought that was pretty great and and i mean i love that that's yeah yeah that's your well if you could just as we wrap up here before the reading i mean you know i think this reading by the way will unnerve some people it, you, you're not seeking to make people comfortable are you no i don't i don't think i think there's two kinds of fiction to be honest mm-hmm. i think that there's two kinds of storytelling there's there's one that is pure entertainment mm-hmm. and and to a degree that pure entertainment can titillate and to a degree, my writing can titillate. But the other kind of, of storytelling is the kind that makes you think, makes you uncomfortable, makes you question the reality that we live in. Some readers will hate that. Some readers just want to be purely entertained, and that's totally fine. I've written some purely entertaining fiction that has really nothing of, of great depth behind it. But I think when I'm firing on all cylinders as a writer, I think the stuff that comes out is, is more thoughtful. I think The Night Walkman is one of those things that hopefully will make a reader that enjoys it question our reality, think about things a little deeper. That's my hope. And if it makes you uncomfortable, well, I've done something. I've, I've pushed a button somewhere. So when people say, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't read this book while I was eating dinner. It was just too upsetting. Uh, that may sound sadistic on my part, but I'm actually pleased because it means that I've affected you in some way. 
It's very true. Well, I, uh, Jason, as always, a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you for sharing this reading. And without further... Thank you, Alex. Sure. I appreciate your, your time and having me on. Sure. And without further ado, Jason McIntyre's reading of The Night Walk Men, the number one Amazon suspense novella, and the prelude to an entire entire miniseries, basically, of books in this particular world. Again, Jason McIntyre in his reading starts now. The Night Walk Men by Jason McIntyre. First, the fuse is burning. You want to chat about the weather first? Well, fine. We can talk about that first, if it's important. Before that, though, you need to know one thing. This is going to be painful. This is going to be a bowling ball dropped from waist height on your toes. A dentist's chair, plus a drill, plus small talk. This is going to be coming down from on high. Or finding your spouse in bed with another. Or murder-suicide. Or heavy metal from the neighbor at three in the morning. This is going to be the doctor telling you it's inoperable. Or a chemical burn on flesh. Or pepper spray and a wrongful conviction. This is going to be fire eating your life's work. This is going to be your first time. Or your last time. This is going to be twelve fresh body bags going under the yellow tape and into the house at the end of Shepherd Street. This is going to be malevolent eyes in the dark, staring down into a crib at a screaming baby. This is going to be painful. But we can chat about the weather first. That's no big deal. I'll start by telling you something you didn't know. Something you'll probably think is trivial. Something that even your local weatherman likely hasn't heard. More people die when it's raining. Did you know that? Certainly when it's oppressively hot for days and days, even for weeks at a time, you'll hear about the old and the infirm, and how they just can't make it through. How they'll lean back in a chair, fade away, and expire. That happens all the time when it's hot. And during the holidays, that's a big time for us, too. You'll have large numbers of folks simply switch off like a bulb in the attic. The lonely and the depressed, they'll up and do something regrettable while they're alone, or, or maybe they'll succumb to sheer emotion, two outcomes that don't offer an undue option. But it really is raining when the lion's share take that last bow. There's just something about it, something that doesn't jibe with human guts. Dollar for dollar, day for day, soul for soul. It's the rain that finishes most life sentences with that final period. It's the patter of water on pavement, water from sky onto road and roof, water against the clappered siding of an old home that brings most of us out to do our work. Be aware, when it's mild, when it's temperate, we are there. We're always there, and that's a promise. But when it's raining, we're there in droves. We're there for keeps. That's a guarantee. You want to chat about the weather first? Fine. We can definitely chat about the weather first.
Well, if you were as intrigued by that as I was, you're going to want to get a copy of The Night Walkman, and that would be easily done by visiting Jason's mothership website, thefarthestreaches.com. That's thefarthestreaches.com. He's, of course, available just about wherever all ebooks are sold as well, but I would start with his mothership site because at thefarthestreaches.com you will find just the entire Jason McIntyre body of work. You'll also find blog posts by him and some background, and it's just a good place to start. So, again, we at Mysterious Goings On, we're thrilled to have Jason and so honored to have this wonderful reading. We appreciate you listening, and if you enjoyed this show, please leave us a review on iTunes. It would really help keep things moving right along. So until next time, keep reading. Get a credit card that gives you what you need now, a low interest rate on everyday purchases, and a place to transfer high interest rate balances. The PenFed Gold Contactless Card is our lowest rate credit card. You can even earn a $100 statement credit when you spend $1,500 in the first 90 days. Join PenFed, and together we can help you keep more of what's yours. Visit PenFed.org slash gold card. To receive any advertised product, you must become a member of PenFed, insured by NCUA. It's a great time to get a great deal on a new car when you get approved for an auto loan from PenFed. Our powered by true car rates are as low as 1.39% APR on new vehicles. Finance for a longer term to lower your monthly bill. Plus, take up to 60 days to schedule your first payment. Join PenFed and together we'll keep you moving forward. Anyone can apply. Visit PenFed.org slash auto or call 1-800-247-5626. To receive any advertised product, you must become a member of PenFed, insured by NCUA.